Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It is the 11th, oh, wait, sorry, it's the 12th of January in Asia. Topics for today, Contributor Summit, Google Summer of Code, version documentation for Jenkins.io, uh, sponsor attributions, and integrating Docker Compose into Jenkins documentation. And maybe we'll get to a demo of that one before we're done with today. So Contributor Summit, we're pleased to have 20 plus individuals confirmed to attend, four or five board members. So we don't have confirmation from Kosuke, but every other board member will be there. Okay. Um, and uh, really th thrilled with it. The agenda is being assembled. We've got uh, lots of cool topics that will be presented and looking forward to more. So it's going to be a great time. Wow, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Then GSOC Google Summer of Code 2024 preparation has started. I have an open action item. I flagged it in another office hours oh, in, in advocacy earlier today. The Git plugin authentication um idea is non-viable uh but the documentation back end extension indexer is still very viable it just needs a prototype from me to assure that it's a a, a really reasonable thing to do and then we can put it as a as a project idea Oh, cool. So, and we've had, last year we had a documentation improvement project. The year before we had a documentation improvement project, each of them doing coding work. So very nice. Very nice indeed. And we will meet on January 24th of 2024 in an online meetup for, uh, meant for contributors. So, so this will be an introduction for contri potential contributors. This is how you get involved with the Jenkins project. Here's how you submit a project idea. Here's how you create the pl a good plan, et cetera. Oh, and I see. And you're doing a blog for the Call for Mentors, too? We've got a, a Call for Mentors blog post, and it was posted, I think it was posted back in December. Yeah, December right. 5. Okay. Are, we, are you using, is part of that the argument why companies need to contribute, why it's in their best interest to contribute? No, the, this You're is just going for the geek. Right. This is just give your time to help help these new contributors to open source. It, it's not right. doing a, a why would companies care? It's rather just, hey, give give to open source. Right. All right. And then the the next topic was version documentation. And here, um, the crucial thing is that we can report issues with current content. Well, Vandit, the uh, creator of the of the project, is taking exams, ah. and then early February, twenty twenty four, Vandit will return to the project, and uh, resolve open issues that we found, etc. Meanwhile, Hervé Lemur and the infrastructure team are preparing to deploy the prototype at docs.jenkins.io. Whoa. Yeah, it's it's we're I'm very pleased with it. Now I'm sure there is more, there are more challenges hiding with it. You know, there oh, it's, are. Right. Kevin's Kevin's done a good review of it. I've got more reviewing to do, but Vandit is has made great progress and is willing to keep working to make that progress. So very pleased. Any questions on the version documentation site? Um, so what will be your policy? Will it be like if you have something that works one way in release X and completely different in the release why what will it be of the content with that will you just freeze the doc for release for x and it's up there as a version or will there be any attempt to put 
version information across releases or it's, are you going to keep the releases pure so intent the intent right now is to keep the releases pure if only because it's a lot easier to maintain that way so what what we see if you look at the at the git documentation for instance if we look at gitscm.com here when we look at their documentation site in the reference manual we can see for instance that up here here's their pick list and as far as i can tell they don't go back in time to revise anything right it's and so when we look back you'll find all sorts of sort of glaring oh here was this error long ago and those errors don't get corrected they just stay there now we'll be using a branch per per version so each version will be on its own branch so we could conceptually go back and correct things in a in a particular version but i doubt we will i'm thinking of the other direction um in a new release will you preserve anything from the previous release or two oh oh and i think totally we'll preserve it? we'll preserve everything so so what what we, at least my mental model is just exactly what what the git project does here what they do is they said they take the preceding versions documentation is the base for the next versions. Right. So every correction you made in N minus one is available in N. Right. I'm saying, what about something that's different between release N and N minus one? Will you purge the material for N from N plus one? So, okay, let's, let's, let me give a very specific example. Here's a, here's one that maybe, may, maybe along the line of what you're thinking. Someday in the future, we will remove blue ocean from Jenkins. We'll deprecate. Yes. It. There's a good All right. One, yeah. So there's a, there's an example, right? So blue ocean someday in the future, and it may be 12 months, it may be 18 months, it may be 24 months, but someday in the future, blue ocean is deprecated. Mm -hmm. And its documentation content at some long-term support release will be deleted from that version's pages and probably replaced by the thing that is taking the place of Blue Ocean. In this case, probably Pipeline Graph Viewer. Okay. So, um, so today we see, let's see, today we see, go ahead. What was your question? Go, go finish what you're saying and then. Well, so here's here's the example documentation for me. It we look here and we see Blue Ocean, and this entire section exists today in the version documentation. So, getting started, creating a pipeline, etc. It's all there. Yeah, I recognize it all. Yes. And when when that day comes in the future, I would expect this will be replaced by a chapter that still actually probably will will create a redirect from blue ocean to the next thing I'm not hearing you oh you're you're not hearing me i can see you oh weird huh so i'm not sure there you're back oh okay good interesting i wonder what happened oh who knows it's probably really okay amazing. yeah so so the when the day comes that Blue Ocean is removed from, let's say it's removed from the plugin setup with, or from the setup wizard in Jenkins. Uh huh. At that removal, then for that LTS version, the Blue Ocean chapter will be gone. It will a redirect will be created that redirects from Blue this Blue Ocean page and from each of these pages to probably a single page that says Blue Ocean has been removed, and then a link to and here's the new thing. Right. That makes sense. That's big and gross. What about something where the big things stays, but um, an argument is renamed or is removed or something like that? So that's a that's an exceedingly rare thing. But let's mm -hmm. let's look at an example of that here. What we're going to do is let's look for remoting just changed one of its arguments. Uh huh. Okay, and there, what you see here is a pointer to the library, to the repository on GitHub. So the, it takes us to the authoritative. There's another page here on this one. Nope, not that one. Now I got to find it because I was just reading and, in fact, edited this page. Maybe it's 
Jenkins remoting. There we go, this page. Okay, so here, if there were some mention in here of the command line arguments, there isn't, but hypothetically, if there were, yeah. then I would expect in this page for the version that's associated with 2.426.2, the currently shipping version, it would show here's the here's the deprecated argument and that deprecation is, well, here you go. Here's the deprecated deprecation message and a right. link to the announcement of it. Okay, yeah, that's good. It is. It's hard to do those things. That's why I, I go back in my head about it. Because the problem, of course, is that users often have hybrid right. environments and they look at one set of docs. They don't look at all of them. So mm -hmm. just curious what you were doing about that. Okay, go on. Good. Great. So I think that covered all the topics I wanted to touch on version documentation. Any other questions there? Nope, looks wonderful. Okay, next piece then was sponsor attributions. And this one, what we've had is a request from one of our big sponsors, JFrog, saying, hey, could you please add an attribution for us to the downloads page? And attributions are a good thing, right? Yes. We, we like those. We want to be sure that our donors know how grateful we are for them. And so we've got a whole whole section at the bottom of our page here for, for donors and a way to say thank you to those donors. Right. I I still like, I'm wondering, like you a couple of meetings ago, you went through what they all did. I'd love it if there was a pop-up for each one that said, you know, they provide servers for us for this or... Right. You know, um, and, and I think, I think that three is... Three of their employees are on our board or whatever. Right. And that's a, that's a, that's a sort of the direction we're going is to get, become much more detailed about what this, what is in this very simple section, because even in, at this horizontal thing here, there are very different levels of commitment between the, the various groups that are on this page. Right. O open source, the Oregon State University Open Source Lab pretty much hosts our mirror, uh, the the roots of our mirrors. And mm -hmm. and that's more of a mirroring thing, whereas CloudBees provides an enormous bunch of people and almost a hundred uh, over a hundred thousand dollars a year in cloud, that their their contribution is enormous. CD Obviously. Foundation likewise has provided in in years past over a hundred thousand dollars. Right. And it's just interesting. I mean, it puts because we've all seen this the messy pages of here's all our logos. Mm -hmm. And it means nothing, you know, it puts a little, I don't know, human face to it or something. Right, right. And and you're absolutely correct. So we want we want certainly want to make it richer in terms of okay, these two are mirror providers, but this one and this one are actually monitoring providers. Mm-hmm. And here's one that hosts all of our prototype websites. These folks donate a mainframe that right. we use for testing. It also, by the way, gives them an incentive if they want to start donating more. Mm -hmm. like maybe they're now giving a mainframe and then next year they say, well, you can, we'll give you two people for 50% of their time or so, you know. Right, exactly. It's that kind of, we it's want a, to be it's sort of like the, what your contributor highlight too, is that it puts a story to it. It does. Exactly. And and the company story, for instance, with DigitalOcean, we'll be creating a blog post that talks to people about how we use DigitalOcean's resources and and how we how we make that work smoothly for users of the Jenkins system. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good. Good work. So any other questions on the sponsor attributions? Nope. All right. Next one then is integrating Docker Compose into the Jenkins documentation. And here, the story is really about how much easier it is to make, to, to go through this tutorial, thanks to all the work that that Bruno Verachten has done in his, let's look at it. It's You've got to see it just to, to get a comparison of how much easier it is. So the thing that he has improved is on the tutorials page, this getting this build a java app with maven and so if we if we look here at the 
here are his instructions to clone the, the sample repository. Okay, those are the same everywhere. Yep. In the start your Jenkins instance section, here's the new section. Notice the length. It's got oh three, my. three bullet items and that's it. Three bullet items and a paragraph or two. Yep. Let's look at the old one to get some hint of what it takes to start Jenkins in that old one. So I remember to... that. All it right. Was ugly. It, it is a horror. All right. So it's a horror if everything goes smoothly. Exactly. It's only horrible if everything goes sm smoothly. It's t a total disaster if anything goes wrong. Right. And there's so many places. I mean, so you're dealing with all these different operating systems and environments. There's so many things that can go exactly. wrong. Exactly. So, okay. We, we just, let's just talk about Linux and Mac OS. Scroll, 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 <laughs> scroll, scroll, scroll. And that's probably easier than Windows to do. Right. And now Windows, scroll, scroll, scroll. Okay. And now how do you, okay. It's that complicated in terms mm -hmm. of what do you do? And Bruno has simplified it to start your Jenkins instance with this one command right here. You clone this. And then where is the, oh, this. Docker compose up minus D, Maven. Uh -huh. Boom. Why is that command buried in a sentence rather than? Yeah, I think I think that's a good point. Is just looking to find it. We need to put that on its own line. Make it, it big it, and bold. Item two, you you know, after cloning, run this colon and then. Well, and and the other benefit of doing that is then we can put this one should also have a copy item, a copy line. Uh -huh. or a copy icon, and this one could have a copy like icon as well. Right. So that the user knows, copy this, paste it, you're going. Right. Nice, though. Yes, it is. Uh, it, Bruno's done a great job with it. And that's all the topics that I had for today. Anything else from you, Meg? No, not at all. All right. Well, thanks very much. By eight minutes. Good work. All right.